Jed's Carl here with Tactical Rifleman. I'm out here with Josh from Textron Systems. We're going to talk about the, the, uh, their submission for the NGSW contract. What's that stand for? That's Next Generation Squad Weapons. Next Generation Squad Weapons. All right, this here is the battle rifle. It goes in conjunction with the saw, uses the new sexy 6.8 bullet. Tell me about the rifle here. What do we got going on? Sure. So first and foremost, Carl, we're really thrilled to be out here with you today. To do this with your, your world-class team at Tactical Rifleman is, is really exciting for us. And I appreciate that. Thanks. I do. Yeah. I do. So this is our, our, our rifle offering. So it fires 6.8 case telescope ammunition. Um, it's magazine fed. It's a short stroke piston system. It's capable of firing semi-automatic and automatic. Um, the one thing really to consider with this weapon is everything that you want to do in your brain housing group already with your M4 and all that stuff can be done with this weapon. There's only one change and that's due to the ammo. So if you look at that ammunition, there's no extractor groove on it, right? Yeah. So in order to get our, our round out of our chamber, we have to use a push through feed and eject system. So you look at the magazine well here, the chamber is actually seated in this area right here yep. and it translates, it's not attached to the barrel. It's just not a smart idea to stick all polymer ammunition in a hot, in a hot chamber yeah, and just sure. let it sit there, yep. right? So we've got to get it moving, we got to get airflow on it, et cetera. So you see this round feed through the magazine into the chamber. The, the, the bolt carrier group or firing pin carrier for our weapons would then translate that chamber up to be in line with the barrel. You, know, you pull the trigger, hammer drops, and then it works like a normal weapon. Nice. Upon recoil, that chamber is gonna be mechanically actually back down, and the next round is gonna push the previously fired round into the ejector port. So the ejection port's actually forward. That's right. right. Okay, all right. And so with that, uh, it, it actually improves a lot of things for us with reliability, et cetera. There's, you know, this round can only go into one chamber and it's gonna be pushed through. If nothing's being pulled in and out, you're not gonna have any mistiming like with double feeds or any kind of stuff. So it's really a good system for us. It's been proven since about 2007 when we started doing this with 5.56 actually. So it's, we, we're pretty excited about it. I heard those it. guns are awesome. Li very, very lightweight compared to normal guns. That's right, right? that's right. So looking at it on the outside of it, uh, there are some things that are different, but you still have an adjustable buttstock, you know, All six right. position. Okay. You've got your fire selector, safe, semi-automatic. Everything automatic. is ambidextrous, which Absolutely. Uh, all modern weapons should have right now. Absolutely. Okay. So magazine release for the shooter's left, magazine release on the shooter's right. Nice. And this little feature down here is our bolt catch, bolt release, yep. right? So to lock the char carrier down, what we call the blocking our bolts to the rear, you would Pull the charging handle, look at mid-length on the gun, which is non-reciprocating. It can also be put on Either side. shooters left or right. Nice. Uh, you would lock that down to the rear, and then the send it home, you would push down. Very similar to like a lot of offerings yep. out there nowadays. Okay. Our whole thought process with this design and this fire control system here is to help the shooter, right? To reduce the load on fine motor function under stress. Everything can be manipulated with your firing hand. Single hand. That's right. And the workspace is all eye level from, you know, elbow forward. You're not reaching too far back. You're not coming back here to do anything. It's all right in front of all you. All right. Up here, we, like I mentioned earlier, we have the charging handle. So it's mid-length. It's about uh, you know a good length for everybody out there. We've done okay. a lot of human factor studies to put this in the right position. Um, and actually, what you're looking at with this charging handle in this, this situation here with the fire control, uh, our customer, PM Soldier Lethality, has done a really good job of giving us access to people of your ilk that are still in. Um, to help refine our design. So this, what you're looking at is, is, you know, we've taken soldier feedback and put it directly into this gun. So this was our first prototype offering. We're now iterating again on a second one. So this is the latest that we've got. So one of the things that is unique to our weapon system, again, driven by the ammunition and the push through feed and eject system is the need for a clearing rod. So like we mentioned earlier with the push through feed and eject system, when that round's gonna index and pick, be picked up from the magazine and pushed into the chamber, the next round is going to push that previously and spent it would round. Be sitting right there. Yes, yeah. sir. It's going to come right out the ejection port. If you have no following round, last, uh, last you, round, you need yeah. to unload. You need to show clear. You're going to make the weapon safe for all conditions. You would lock. Well, if chamber would already lock it down. All right. You would remove your magazine, and you would index here with your clearing rod. And what this clearing rod is going to do when you pull it to the rear is put a mechanical rod right through the chamber. And it's going to drop that last spent round right out of the magazine well. Nice. So at this point, this weapon will be unload, show clear. It's conditioned for it. It's all good to go. And you can see, with it turned like that, you can actually see the face of the bolt right there. That's right. right? Yeah, you can look at it through the ejection port. You can also see it through the magazine well if needed. The one note is that you don't need to do that for every magazine change. We get a lot of comments on the internet for things we put out there that, oh, you got to do that for every magazine change. It's, it's no, not the same. Leave, the, leave that expended round right exactly there. It's right. no big deal. Right. Yeah. Regular reload, you're right back yeah. in action. Uh, too easy. Yeah, people that don't know should hold their comments to themselves, <laughs> right? I get a lot of that, by the way. Here, <laughs> I, I really do. All right, so uh, let's start getting down in nitty gritty. Uh, start with suppressor. Tell me a little bit about suppressor. So the suppressor is a LMT, a Lewis machine tool, located in Iowa. Uh, the one of their suppressors. It uses uh -huh. a virtual baffle system. 
uh, which is a technology they developed with Lawrence Livermore Labs on a 240 suppressor program years ago. We've worked with them for several years now and are thrilled about the suppressor. So you'll, when you fire it, you'll notice that it dramatically improves controllability. It dramatically improves sound reduction. Um, and you also see that it, it stays cooler uh, a lot longer than you would expect it to. Awesome. We're very excited about it. All right, and it stays on full time or we, we have a flash hide or muzzle brake? What do we have? That's right, we've got a flash hider underneath it. So if we were to take it off, all right, you got it. Yep. We have two locking tabs here that we would undo, and then we would unscrew it. Left hand throw. Pull it off. All right, and that's just a regular flash hider. That's right, three prong, close 10, but uh, regular flash hider. Cool, all right. <laughs> all right, so let's, um, let's move on. This is not your usual rail here. This has got uh, electronic contacts, and this is for the fire control system. That's right. So another program being developed in, in parallel with ours is a fire control system program. So we have to be able to interface with that second program. So to do that, we have a Picatinny smart rail here. So you can look in here, and you can see little contacts running all down this rail here. And what that will allow anything to do is any enabler that's put on here with the correct mount will be able to share power through a one common battery location, which is found in the butt stop. Battery. Uh, gets held by this pin right, right here. Yep. Awesome. So one battery for everything you can put on your rail. The second part of that is it can share data. So in theory, you could put a ballistics uh, solution uh, computer, you know, like a Wilcox Raptor or something like that. Yep. Uh, enable that, laser your target, get the ballistic solution, and it'll feed that data through the wire to to a to your optics. To serve reticle on your optics. So it's all of our viewers. They they got it. We got it. You got. Let me see the inside of this thing. You got to. All right. So what do you say we do disassembly, reassembly, right after this commercial? All right, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial as much as I did. Right, uh, so let's go over disassembly, reassembly. Absolutely. So this is a really big deal for us. It's the first time we've done this on camera. Uh, this is the real deal here. So you're, this is not what you're going to see on other YouTube videos. It's pretty special here. So we operate on, you know, same thing, takedown pins. We have three of them. I don't have to, like, put a black square no, in my eyes. No, no, you're good. All right, we're good. So we would pull these pins out, and we would separate our upper and lower. Finally, the lower works just like any other lower. It looks pretty similar. It's got a hammer in the, or the trigger system in the lower. The hammer's there. Your magazine release, you can see it. it's just a normal lower. Uh, it is polymer for weight, but uh, it's pretty simple. And is it, this is the full auto version, so it's literally got the fun switch and everything. That's correct, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's simple enough. All right, yeah. now the nitty gritty sure. right here. The next questions we really get a lot with this system is uh, the ejector module, right? Yeah. Why is it so far forward, et cetera? We've taken every design consideration that we can possibly do to make it as user-friendly as possible. You can actually get a left-handed ejector module. Okay. So what that would do is that one pin there, you can then get a left-handed one and put it in so that the ejection port is now on the left-handed side of the rifle. All right. So friendly for our lefties here. We haven't forgot about our 6% of the military. So in, inside here, we take this back take down pin, this back plate all comes out. You're going to see our buffer assembly. So it's attached to the stock in this back plate, and it's a buffer assembly. Very similar to like you see with open bolt machine gun. Yeah. A, this really does resemble a saw a lot, like, right. you, like you had mentioned earlier. Right. right. So we were to take the charging handle and pull it all the way to the rear. We're going to have our, our firing pin carrier. All right. Next, we can take out our chamber. This is it. All right, and this is the part that actually moves. Correct. Right? right. So there's no crazy moving things. That's uh, right. It's different, but it's the same amount of parts. It's just different. It's just in. See that? I wasn't expecting it to be that simple. It, right. Looking at it, you're like, this has got to be crazy hard. It's going to be hard to clean. And that, that's a big deal because soldiers have to be able to clean their weapon, but I can literally reach everything here. That's right. I can reach everything. You know, we're, uh, our engine team is very, very good at understanding that Rube Goldberg devices don't do well in combat, right? We need few parts, we need easy yeah. cleaning, we need easy lubrication points. So this would be a field strip weapon at this point. And you can look that the barrel and the barrel extension is fully ac accessible. You can get your hands yeah. and your fingers all the way through here. There's no more star chamber, right? There's no more dental picks or any that kind of stuff. It's just a, a rag. All right, uh, show me how easy it is to put back together. All right. For some reassembly, we're going to take our chamber, we're going to orient the tracks to the front, we're going to slide it in the front, and it's in. Good to go. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our firing pin carrier, we're going to put our rammer forward, we're going to index it on its tracks to the rear of the housing, make sure it pushes all the way forward and seats. You're going to, to get visual confirmation of that, you're going to see that rammer go into that chamber there. All right, the rammer actually goes into the chamber. That's crazy, dude. That's so simple. Right. All right. 
Next, next. Next thing we'll do is we're going to take our buffer assembly and back plate. We're going to stick it up down like this. We're going to make sure we line all the tracks, the feet for the, uh, for the buttstock here. And once it's aligned, it just goes home. Put the pin in, you're good to go. Next thing we'll do is we'll take our right-handed ejector module in this case. We're going to pull back a little bit on the charging handle, seat it nice and comfortably in there, push that pin in, get it lined up. All right, pins okay. in. And from that point, we're pretty much done with the upper receiver. Next, we'll take our lower receiver. Make sure the pins are Make out. Make sure the pins are out this time. We're going to index it on its home. Pop our pins in. And those are just, uh, they're, they're captured pins just like an M4, so everybody's that's used correct. to them. Absolutely. All right, so uh, all that's left is suppressor. That's right. So once we got our three pins in, lower, upper and lower are made it again. We're going to take the suppressor, make sure our lock Left tabs, hand thread. Left hand thread. Yep, the other way. The other way, your other left. There we go. You got this. That's right. Okay. Tighten I'm it glad down. I'm here to help you out. Right. We'll tighten it down, hand tight, push our locking tabs in, and then run our collar down over the locking tabs so they don't back out on us when we're fighting. I know this is this is awesome. All right. Um, all right. So we've got a bunch of mags. We've got a couple sexy guns. We've got the new ammo. We got a lot of it. Uh, sure. Let's take this puppy out to the range and shoot it right after our next commercial break. All right, Josh, so everything looks normal to me. Fire control, select the levers where it usually is, mag release where it usually is. I'm even used to that uh, bolt locking lever. A lot of the other guns, the XCR uses them. Charging handle, kind of like uh, the, the SCAR. What am I missing here? What To load this weapon and fire it, what am I missing? Nothing. That's it. So the way you want to load the weapon normally, insert a magazine, depress your, col or your uh, carrier catch, and you're ready to fire. All right. L literally, same as normal, except I don't have a pointy bullet for me to look at. That's right. Uh, mag in the bottom of the gun. Nice and easy. Pull, beer can grip, and release it. We are set, ready to go. Right. That easy. So nothing has changed here. No, sir. All right, and roll through one pound, two pound. Nice. Let's do it again. Yeah, that's uh, it's a little more recoil than uh, than a five five six. But you know, considering with as much energy as we're hitting, you know, we're hitting with more energy than a 308. And That's this, right. this is this is a joy to shoot. You don't mind if I shoot your ammo, do you? Absolutely. That's what I brought it here for. Yeah. All right. Now I know I asked you for a nice short magazine That's right. like that, but the reality is, my select deliver it, it kind of feels a little wiggly, so I'm gonna move it over to. The fun switch. All you right. With that, you yes, try sir. that out a little bit. That's right. Push, pull, and one click for semi-automatic fire. Two clicks for freedom. All right. Let me go to that piece of steel sitting way out there. Oh, baby. Oh, man, we need bigger mags with this. 60 <laughs> round mags yet? We're working on it. I'm digging that. I really am digging that right there. So this is where the, the uniqueness of CT comes in. Now you need to grab your clearing rod handle, pull it out, index it to the this, rear. This one right here on the side. That's right. Pull it out. And, and pull it to the rear. Back, and there goes and your last round. that last casing out. That's right. And now your weapon is free and clear. And I can literally check my chamber right there. That's right. Right. And there can't be anything in there. Right. That's not hot. Um, it's literally, it's cool to the touch already. And that's running a can. How hot does this gun warm up when uh, running the can on it? Does it get hot like a normal gun or is it bleeding heat pretty good? It gets hot like a normal gun. It's still a firearm. We're still doing a controlled explosion inside of it. There's no secret sauce to it. It, it does get hot. However, having that chamber separate, like you're talking about there, that cool ammo, uh, it dissipates the heat as best it can. And Pretty I have actually seen 5.56 five, rounds cook off in M4s overseas. I was in Jordan, and we shot 
10 mags doing zipper drills. And we did, we had a couple guys, uh, the round left in the chamber cooked off. That literally can't happen with this. No. Can't happen. That is awesome. All right, so this was the next generation squad weapon. We got a chance to look at the new 6.8 ammo, great capability, increased performance at extended distances. We got to look at the new battle rifle for the automatic rifleman. Great, great systems all across the board. Again, these are still just prototypes, but uh, this is awesome. And I'm glad that us here at Tactic Rifle, we got a chance to see it. You guys know the deal, leave the comments below. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.